Vinny Letary needs no introduction to this community for sure. I've played at Minnetonka High School, four years with the Golden Gophers, and now after a couple of stops around the National Hockey League, landed here within this Minnesota Wild organization. Vinny's a local kid that I think you all know as a hockey player is very valuable to the organization and it's what we need. Obviously, almost feels like your first game again when you go and play at home. Playing for the Wild is definitely uh, on another level. You talked about it before, Minnesota kids coming home, handling that pressure. How do you think he's going to handle it? I signed here because of the opportunity and because of Billy's uh, trust and faith in me. It's just a bonus that it's at home. We're just such a close-knit family and I think everyone was pretty proud and pretty excited to see me sign back here. In order to make this team, make the Wild and stay in the NHL, he's got to bring intensity every shift. You have to be a complete player in the NHL, so it's up to him. So he's going to have to earn it, and he's got the capability of doing it. I've just had one goal, and that was to be in the NHL and win the Stanley Cup. And for me now, it's, it's continually being grateful and staying in the present moment and taking one day at a time and try to just enjoy the moment so it doesn't become a memory too fast. It's not often that you can play for your hometown and have your whole family. And, Everyone there is supporting you, so very grateful. Hey guys, we're at the cabin in Balsam Lake, Wisconsin. We're gonna give you a little tour. Come on in. Starting with the living room, we're in the main cabin right now. My grandparents, Lou and Annie, Francine. It's my dad, Tino. He's on popcorn duty right now. Ash, Ozzy, sit, stay, stay. Now, if they're good boys, we'll go on and we'll get the popcorn a little bit. But this is the kitchen. This is where all the parents sit, adult table. Doesn't matter how old we are, we don't ever sit here. We have probably the most random fridge you can imagine. And there's antiques here, like my grandpa's gear. So we have probably some condiments that are as old as his skates. And we try to veer off of that, but um, to be honest, this is giving me a little bit of anxiety, so I'm just gonna close it up. Okay, we got it. Good boys. This house was the uh, oldest house built from the New Hampshire border to the Canadian border. It was torn down by an educator, and he was gonna build a house in Illinois for he and his wife. Before they got started, his wife got sick, and then people from here, they bought it, came here, built it, and then uh, one fellow wanted to go back, he's from Cuba, and he wanted to go back and live in Lauderdale. So uh, we were able to buy the house. So this is where the kids eat. Eat there, eat here. Like I said, you just grab a chair. Sometimes we'll sit in the long chair too. The G1s, uh, first generation, all of our parents and grandparents, they sit there. Like I said, we don't have a seat or a sniff at that table. This is probably our favorite part, obviously, lakeside and where we spend most of our time, just relaxing and drinking our grandma's famous bootleg recipe. Who did that for me? <laughs> Jeffrey? Did you shake it no, up? No, I would never do that. <laughs> All right, so that was the main cabin, and now we're going to go and see the bunkhouse and the rest of the property.
Right, so this is the infamous bunkhouse, and this is kind of like our way of just being kids again and hanging out, and obviously when the parents go to bed around 10, 11, we can stay up here and play cards, which we always love doing, hanging out, listening to our relatives FaceTime their significant others or their people that they're talking to, so it's kind of funny. All right, so that's where we built pretty much all of our memories growing up in the bunkhouse, in our last cabin, the bunkhouse. Now we're gonna go see the new cabin, the new addition to my grandparents' compound. This is a little bocce ball court, obviously in a little rough shape right now. And then we have horseshoes and a little pond back here. And then my grandpa built a little dog pen back there. Beautiful dog pen. He called it the Taj Mahal for dogs. So this is the new cabin, the bathroom right here, bedroom right here, then common area. Again, we have a beautiful kitchen here that uh, we use Thanksgiving dinners, 4th of July, Memorial Day weekend when everyone's up here. This is probably the most fun game. It's a horse racing board. And I gotta give credit to Casey Milstead's dad making these boards. We have four or five of these in our family and we create whatever logo we want. So for my grandpa did the North Stars. And it's awesome, a lot of yelling, a lot of screaming. Uh, so that's probably our favorite game to play. And especially when you put on some, some money on it, then it gets even more intense. Besides the parents room, whoever gets to the cabin first gets the choice of what room to take. Now we do have some rules on where all the kids go uh, to keep them kind of in the same place, especially the newborns. For a while, Cassandra and I, when, whenever we came up here, we'd snag this room, but it is probably the most comfortable place to be when you can't get away from my grandpa at every single turn. All right, so for the last part of the tour, we're gonna take you on a little ride to see the pickleball court and then a uh, little weight room. We have a bocce court, we have horseshoes, we have boat, fish, pole barns with a gym in it, another pole barn has a pickleball court in it, throw bags, whatever you want. In the winter, you can skate in a pond back there and take the four wheelers and off road if you want. They, they, there's enough to keep everybody busy. All right, so this is our last stop, and we have our pickleball court, and then where we work out too. I used to use this in my house every day growing up, just a speed bag. Great for conditioning. Ping pong table, little dartboard, and one of our four wheelers. And then this is a little weight room. It runs in the whole family. Everyone's pretty determined whether they still play a sport or uh, they work behind a desk or moving around, whatever it is. Everyone likes to get a little sweat in. Last but not least, probably the best addition now is the pickleball court. I've only lost one game. Only advantage here, if you're losing or there's a bad shot, is the ceilings are a little bit low for some lobs. So if you do hit the ceiling, it's a redo on the point. So whenever you're in a pickle, just send one to the moon. Well, the good fortune of having a few buildings is not everybody's in the same building usually at one time. But if they are, yes, you know, it could get louder because uh, there's a lot of energy there. The competitiveness always brings more, more volume. Freaking Tina always cheats. Look at him. No! It's just a place to be all together and so casual and so fun. We're out on the lake. There's a great small town with great small shops and breweries. And yeah, it's just, it's so much fun. Nice cage. Oh, no way. A lot of hockey players like to use tennis as training in the, the off season. But pickleball is so great for your agility and for your hand-eye and just a fun way to get a, a little workout in. Nice. Woo. 
I come from a very small family, so being thrown in this with 40 people always hanging out together, it's chaotic, but we love it, and I couldn't ask for a better family to be married into. Yeah! Woo! Let's go! Welcome to the Minnesota State Fair. It's my dad's booth, Tino's Pizza on a Stick. I love the fair. I, I think it's fun. I mean, uh, being here 35 years, you gotta love it. Uh, like I said, it's uh, the best fair in the country. A five cheese pizza. Five cheese. No, no, no. Five cheese. Today we've got our uh, A team, Tyler Nanny, which is his cousin. I'm like the mascot. They yell at you. You show up every day, you work harder than everyone else, don't get credit, you get burnt. Vinny's new wife, uh, Cassandra. Two pepperoni and one five cheese. Two pepperoni and one five cheese. Most of the time I've got to watch them because they pretty much don't pay attention to the cash. They just like to give away the food, uh, but they're having a good time. Well, Terry on a stick, brought to you by Oven Boy. Most stressful job is on the oven. Cause you never want to mess up the product coming out and Tyler's already screwed up once. So here's a cheese. We have a five cheese and we have a sausage and pepperoni. And then he also sells the calzones, which is sausage, pepperoni, and cheese. We also have the pizza dough balls and it's just pretty much dough balls with shredded mozzarella on top and then marinara sauce to melt it. See, we have no pepperoni to sell now because of Tyler, but no pepperoni right here. I don't even know my name anymore. Boss hates me. Tino's gonna put me on waivers. Growing up, I ended up playing soccer because I followed my father's footsteps. I became a goalie, played in the 1976 Olympic Games. Then from the games, I came here to Minnesota with the Minnesota Kicks, the Strikers, the Vancouver Whitecaps. Once I retired, I got in the food business. And now here we are, uh, a few years later, we're at the State Fair. Look at, look at this, no, I mean, not organized at all. That's not my job. Not organized at all. Tyler and Vinny, we kind of put them in spots where they don't have to think too much. Every $1 tip I get, I seem to get excited and I burn my hand. So next year I'm going to be cooking with oven mitts. And Vinny, he can't count to 10. So I put him on the uh, uh, serving. And even serving, he doesn't know who to serve. Oh, fumble. Oh my god. Oh no. Don't look at the straws. Tino, my dad's always yelling at someone and then a lot of bickering and then it's like riding on a subway, you just kind of shimmy through each other, but it's good. It's very tight quarters, but it makes for a very fun time. Why are we so uh, squished right now? I know because Tyler's in the way, here. I'm in the way, I'm helping. But it's really fun. It's one of our favorite times of the year and it's always great to help out my dad too because he's been working his butt off ever since. I think it's, he's had this booth for 35 years or so. I mean, and he's here every day from morning to night. So he, he does a great job and we're just happy to work for him. Take the pepperoni, pizza on the stick, and then we're gonna give it a nice dip. Let's serve it to the customer. One thing about Vinny that he's brought to the hockey world is that he's very passionate of uh, when he does something. He's very aggressive, he's very committed, and uh, so they do a good job. At the end of the day, I need bodies. They're my people. Tino's in the way again. It's unbelievable. <laughs> cheese? T, you're cramping my get style. In his one Pepperoni second. and cheese? see if we can release some of that tension before you get going. And I'm gonna have you lay flat on your stomach. Take a little pillow for your Here. forehead. Yep. And we're gonna do three breaths, but in a different pattern. So you're gonna take an inhale and you're gonna let your abdominals relax, kind of, sort of. And then an exhale and you're gonna draw them tight. I'm gonna be breathing like Darth Vader into this mic. on that inhale, 
and exhale, pull tight. I think a huge piece of it is mindfulness, and I would say Vinny is the really good at being mindful about his movement. He's asking questions like, what's happening here in my body? How can I readjust that? And it's all of that mindfulness, basically taking that information and being like automatic with it in everything that you do so that you don't have to think about it anymore. Okay, yay, climb on. Hockey players just have tight hips in general, and I did a lot of yoga and warrior sculpt and stuff growing up in high school. I just tangled around with that for a while, and then I've done tons of swimming, and I just found a common ground of just doing things that kind of help the hips and keep yourself mobile. And I started doing Pilates one day, and I tried it out, and just felt really good. And you find out how hard it is, and it's absolutely amazing. I do it every summer now. I think it's so important for my body and my recovery. We mainly worked the reformer, which is a very, very common thing that you see in Pilates. It's probably the number one piece of equipment you see in Pilates. We work on basically stabilization of joints, flexibility of muscles. We also have a lot of mindfulness in here. So now he's really aware of what's going on in his body. So he can be aware when he's playing hockey or golf or walking around. It's very challenging, but every day you just want to get better. And it doesn't matter what you're doing when you're an athlete and you're a competitor, you just want to be the best. Wild making a call down to Iowa, even though this isn't his first stop on the professional level. Still, it means a little of something extra, uh, I think, to Vinny Letary uh, to set down roots here in Minnesota and uh, make a splash here with the hometown team. I would say in every stage of his hockey career, he's always excelled. Letary's going So many hours after hours after hours and teams that he participated in and travel and so on and so forth. And every stage, he's just continued on getting better. You know, of course, you have to work on stuff at every stage. And I would say even now, this is probably the hardest stage he'll ever be at. But he still doesn't stop working. Johnson, high slot, the shot right on, the rebound is gone! Vinny Letary makes it a 2 one game. I was waiting for a long time for the Gophers to send me a recruitment letter and it didn't happen until the end so I thought I was actually going to go to North Dakota until the final last go around when I was making my decision they came in and I just kind of knew it was meant to be for me but uh, playing in Minnesota is the coolest thing and lucky enough on top of that to get my uh, degree I think that was really important for my family and I. Collins back across the green, the Terry hammers and he scores! Oh that was a vicious shot by LaTerry. It's pretty tough to uh, make the league unless you're a top two, three overall player. You're going to play right away. But other than that, it's, you sign your own ticket to whatever team you want to go to, and that's uh, incentive for you to be better than any of the players that were drafted ahead of you. I thought maybe I would get drafted, but at the end of the day, this is the best thing for me is being undrafted. He pulls up, feet across, score! Vinny Letiri in his NHL debut! Well, his first professional year was finding his way, but he, he really learned very quickly. He was up and down with the Rangers, and he was completing his game and learning how to play. You know, when you come out of college and you go play professional, it's, it's a different game. And it's a game that the higher up you go, the faster the pace is. Because of his speed, because of his ability to think the game, he was able to adjust to the game real well. Sets it up, well, got to it in by Finney LeCarrie. I could be a good role model for a lot of players out there just to know that it doesn't matter. Some people mature later on, some people mature early. It's, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon in hockey and you just gotta peak at the right time and you just gotta continue to get better. Favor cut off by Pajot. Boldy to Letary. He yeah. fires, scores! And a fist pump upstairs <laughs> as Vinny Letary has his first goal in a wild sweater. Shoot the puck. Never a mistake. And that's what really well set by Zuccarell. And that shot goes and right in the corner. Fitting, I guess, that you would score with him in the booth. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. It was uh, perfect timing. So everything happens for a reason. And that was, uh, I wouldn't take uh, that one back for anything. So that's pretty special. Did you hear the Lou chants from yeah, the bench? Yeah, yeah, they were all yelling Lou. That was pretty funny. <laughs>
uh, but it's really special. Like I said, a uh, hundred times uh, for my my parents and now my my grandpa to be calling this game is, is really cool. Well, I've watched him play all the way through his whole career. Probably have seen 90% of the games that he's played professionally, both in the American Hockey League and the National Hockey League. I was always hoping that one day he might be able to play for the Wild. You know, you can hope for it, but you never know what's going to happen. So when he finally signed, we were all very excited. It's uh, a dream come true, I guess, for the whole family. I've never felt the pressure once of being under my grandpa. It's so cool to have him, not only from all of his accomplishments or what he's meant for the game of hockey and for the state of Minnesota, but just for who he is as a role model. I mean, I think that it's a blessing and a curse because you get to be a part of such a legacy. What was unique to Vinny is that my dad played soccer and Vinny had a new name in the hockey space of a Letary. And so I really think he's taken that and run with it. Vinny, go, wee, wee. Vinny, Vinny. Oh my gosh. For my father and for my husband, they were blessed to hit the NHL and the professional soccer league right away. And for Vinny, it's been an up and down road. And you know, he, it hasn't stopped him from reaching his goal. He has the same drive, just like my father. And I think that's where Vinny gets it from. No matter what happens, he's always just has, you know, good attitude about everything. He continues to work hard and drives to be the best that he can be. He doesn't let anything get in his way. It's just going to be really exciting, and I love going through this journey with him, especially being in Minnesota. I had now the Lateria shot off the ball. He scores! Well, I'm excited every year, and this year I'm excited more than ever because he's with the Wild. And you love having your kids have the opportunity to play, but when you get the opportunity to play at home, that's special. I had the good fortune of having my whole career here, go for his Olympics, North Stars 23 years. And so now at least I got the opportunity to have a grandson here playing there and he will have had the same thing. Left circle shot and they score from long range. Vinny Letary tipped it home. Hockey is obviously, uh, you could say it's our life, but it's, it's at the end of the day, it's just a sport and our career only goes so long and family's there from the beginning until the end. And, that's who we rely on day in and day out and who has brought this sport into our life. And I'm extremely blessed, extremely grateful for this opportunity. And it's not often that you can play for your hometown and have your whole family and everyone there supporting you. So uh, very grateful. <laughs>